Hello, everyone, and welcome to the best and worst of Walt Disney World. I'm your host, Pete Werner, joined at the table this week by my good friends, Mr. Sean Falk. Hi. Mr. Charles Boda. Hello. Mr. Steve Porter. Hello. And off camera, but always here, the one and only Mr. Craig Williams, our producer. Um, we leave him off camera because he has a face for radio. Um, all right, so in this episode, we are going to talk about the eight best Walt Disney World rides with short wait times, um, especially uh, as people are planning their vacations. You know, one of the things you have to take into account um, is uh, our wait times. Uh, it's kind of always crowded now at Disney World and lines get long. And given that you're limited in the number of fast passes that you can get uh, at one time, um, you may find yourself having to wait in line. And, and they, these are in no particular order. We all kind of discussed it, and we all kind of agreed on it um, pretty much, I think. Um, what we thought the eight best rides with short wait times were, we're going to start with the Tiki Room. And Steve, I think you championed the Tiki Room for this particular... Well, actually, Craig suggested it, but I 100% agree. It's just one of those classic Walt Disney World... Uh, or not Walt Disney World, uh, Walt Disney attractions that, you know, that was, you know, there's pictures with Walt with the birds, and it's just a classic uh, Disney attraction that I think you have to do if you've never been before just to appreciate that history. Did you know that the Tiki Room in California was originally, Walt's vision was for that to be a restaurant? I did, yeah. No, you didn't. Um, <laughs> I was surprised by that. I was, no, and like, it would have been cool. It would have been very yeah, cool. I yeah. think they should still do that. Yeah. Um, I think be very loud. But like every other Disney restaurant, no, every yeah. time we try and record a best and worst or a, a dining show mm -hmm. on location, that's our biggest challenge. Is yeah. that it's so loud everywhere. So. When I was a kid, like the very first time we ever went to the parks, I sat like my family sat like kind of towards the back because for some reason it was completely packed when we went. But um, we sat like towards the back. And when the uh, the totem poles came to life, like right next to me or whatever, it scared me really bad. and We had to leave. So that was, <laughs> because I was really little and started crying. So they because uh, it scared me so bad because their eyes like you just didn't expect it at all. So I mean, now that I'm grown like it's i can appreciate the ride you're not for what still it is, scared i wouldn't go back for a long time because <laughs> i was like oh yeah that's the ride i left that one the nightmares have stopped yeah <laughs> yep all right next on the list um <clears throat> excuse me uh one man's dream walt disney presents i know this is one of your favorites Steve. yeah this is i love one man's dream i think one man's dream though my only complaint about one man's dream is that i wish it was somehow integrated in to main street usa because i feel like that's where it belongs. That's where it belongs, like with the Marceline influence that it has and Walt's history. I feel like that would be, it would fit better there. But regardless, I just love going in there. I love the history of Walt Disney, and I think this is another well, describe one. Describe for folks what they what, what they experience when they go into Walt. Yeah, so as Disney. you walk in, there's lots of pictures of Walt's life and uh, lots of descriptions of little plaques almost that just kind of describe bit by bit you know, different things that he went through, whether it was in his film career or just his life or, you know, with the theme parks. Um, and as you go, there's little models of, you know, I think there's a model of the Jungle Cruise at one point. There's a model of Peter Pan's Flight, I believe, at another. So you see these little models throughout. And uh, I don't know, it just gives you an appreciation. Now, it's been a while do they, uh, since I've been in there. Do they still have the multiplane camera? Yes, mm -hmm. they do, which was... Um, that can... was, you know, that was one of the big... Uh, Walt Disney won a technical uh, uh, Academy Award for uh, for creating the multiplane camera, which is how they kind of created that almost 3D type effect uh, in early films like Snow White and and things like that. And it's this massive, uh, massive contraption that they had to use to do it. But again, it kind of showed the innovation mm -hmm. um, of... Of uh, of the the Disney Company and Walt Disney in specific, but uh, one of the one one of the things in there that always uh, got me was when they had the uh, the mock up of Walt's office with the furniture and and stuff that and they no longer have that unfortunately. Well, because that's because I believe that was that was his office though that was the furniture, and I believe that was moved now back to Burbank. Um, you know, for a long time, his, uh, 
his office was in the uh, animation building, uh, top top corner office of the animation building, and they like leased that out. At one point, Sean Cassidy, for those who go, go back to the seventies, Sean Cassidy's production company was in Walt Disney's office, which I thought was just crazy, a crime against humanity. They have since now taken that original furniture that was on display <clears throat> at Hollywood Studios and moved it back into his original office. No one can get up there. No one. I mean, it's very, 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 very difficult to get up there. I believe D23 did something um, that they took up. Yeah, they regularly do tours. They do tours up there. But even when we do the backstage magic tours with Adventures by Disney, I mean, we can get into Imagineering, but we can't get up to see wow. Walt's office. So, um, but that's where that, that was always my favorite thing. I would give anything to have that experience of going, I, 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 would, I would actually become like physically emotional if I was able to see that. I would, I would really lose it. Um, what? No? No, I agree. That's funny. No, no, no I, I was just laughing because <laughs> you had said you become physically emotional. And I was like, you know. Like, <laughs> shut up. Um, but, yeah, okay. Wait till you do the backstage magic. Okay, okay. Wait till you do the backstage magic. We'll see. We'll see. They Especially are... at like certain points in Imagineering. Okay. Mm. Uh, one of my favorite parts of it is the stripped down animatronic, which comes from oh, what ride originally is that from? Uh, great moments with Mr. Lincoln. Mr. Lincoln, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and that um, uh, I don't know why it's just it's it's just really cool to look at. Um, and if you ever do go on this attraction, go with Steve Porter. Like it seriously is. It's one of his favorites. Um, but he gets very passionate about it, and that passion kind of like transfers. So by the end of the film, like I'm sitting there thinking in my head, like yes. If they ever take this film down for another Pixar preview, Steve and I are going to riot. We're going to burn this place to the ground. Like, you get really, I really get up. so mad. Yeah. Like, there's no yeah, you reason do. You get worked up why about they that. have trailers for upcoming films as promotional nonsense. I'm going to, like, pick it the next time they announce that they're going to do Oh, great. One. Yeah, that's, that, that's not going to affect your job at all. <laughs> um, all right. Next up, uh, over in Animal Kingdom, um, I added this one. The Maharaja Jungle Track, uh, over in the Asia section of Animal Kingdom. This is a walk, a, a walking path, but you see some really, really cool stuff. You see, like, okay, the bat room is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a room that's full of bats, live bats, and it's very, very cool. Mm -hmm. um, but also, you get to see, you know, there, there are ti uh, what, what are the tigers? Um, Sumatran, Sumatran. the yeah. Sumatran tiger is beautiful, and a lot of times when you're out there, you can see them like playing and doing stuff. It's mm -hmm. really, really, really cool. Um, and they have the new cubs now, and the cubs, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it's, I, and I just find that that's a nice. It's never like overly crowded. It's it's a nice, comfortable, you know, experience. Um, so I think, and again, there's never any weight, obviously. It's mm -hmm. a walking it, path. I'm yeah. confused. Is that the one that you do right after the safari? You come out? No, that's, that's the, the safari. Gorilla that's one. the uh, Gorilla Falls. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. I'd... So no, this is the Maharaja Jungle Track over in Asia. Okay. Okay. Yep. 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 Um, Those are predominantly one of the reasons that I fell in love with Animal Kingdom, though. Um, when, when they're like... You know, uh, I got there at Rope Drop and went on all the rides I could, and then everything else, the weights build up. And I absolutely love those jungle tracks, mm -hmm. walking around and seeing the animals. That's the animal part of Animal Kingdom. That's that's why I love that park. That's why I go there. Um, and a lot of those places, you're not getting directly pelted by the sun like you are out in the open, too. So True. Yeah, it's a little shadier and a little cooler. Um, next on the list, Spaceship Earth. Now, some people may be like, oh, you crazy because when i go to epcot spaceship earth has a ridiculous line thanks to thanks to fast pass and that is true in the morning that is true up until world showcase opens and the crowds start moving back into the park when you go in the afternoon oftentimes it's a walk-on yeah. <coughs> oftentimes like it's a walk three o'clock maybe it starts to get better i think it's even sooner than that i've been there i've been yeah, there noon like one o'clock yeah. um okay. and you know a line that was an hour 
at 10 a.m. was 10 minutes at mm-hmm. one o'clock. So um, I always find that, you know, that's a that's a, a safe bet. And that's one of my favorite just nostalgically. It's one of my my favorite attractions. So um, the other one over in the Mexico Pavilion at Epcot, the Grand Fiesta Tour. Now, who likes it better now versus the original when it was El Rio del I don't, Tiempo? I don't remember the original. Nobody? Remember the original? Before it was the Three Caballeros? No. I know Craig does. Oh, wait. Was it all about, like, Mexican life and stuff? Well, yeah. <laughs> then, yes, I do remember that. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I remember that. I like this better. But I'm also, like, one of those kind of people. Like, I don't need to learn about... I'd yeah. rather see about the Three Caballeros. Like, Donald diving into the water is more... <laughs> Something I'd rather watch. So, so and, and <laughs> honestly, for me, the payoff. I was when we were brainstorming this. I said, you know, the payoff for me comes right at the beginning of the ride, when you come out of the the area in your boat and you go around that Aztec pyramid, and you're passing between the pyramid and the restaurant. It's just really, really cool. The whole ride could be that, and I'd be happy. Mm. It reminds me of when you're on Pirates in Disneyland, right as you go with Blue Bayou. It's obviously not as good as Pirates in Disneyland. Not saying that, but it does have that same feel in that little turn right there. Yeah, it does, and that's the big... I do the ride for that. Mm -hmm. The rest of it's okay. That's my... But it's a short wait time. It's inside. It's air-conditioned, especially during the summer. You're never waiting all that long. I will say that I won't be surprised if this is becomes the Coco attraction and it becomes a massively long line. Oh yeah, oh future. yeah, no, it'll be Coco for sure. They yeah. do this as Coco, sure. Yeah, yeah, that that will change. As long as it's three Caballeros, you're good. Uh, if it goes to Coco, forget it. Um, next on the list, another one of my favorites at Epcot. A lot of these are at Epcot. Um, Living with the land over mm-hmm. in the Land Pavilion. It's just awesome. Yeah. It's an awesome classic Epcot Mm -hmm. attraction. Uh, One that has remained virtually unchanged um, since it first opened. Um, Yeah, I love Living with the Land. It's like one of my favorite rides. Even as a kid, it was one of my favorite things. I loved... Um, I, I've even paid to do the behind the seeds tour mm-hmm. or whatever. I think it's like eighteen dollars a person, maybe nine, something like that. Mm-hmm. But um, it's really, really good. It's got they teach you. I mean, obviously, like how they more in depth with like the vegetables and fruits and stuff. But they also show you stuff about like, oh, these are you know not show ready vegetables that we were going to use. So they take them over to Animal Kingdom and feed them to animals there. Oh, wow. um, they tell you some of the back ground stuff like oh they put holes in the top of spaceship earth and those like things that are holding it up have pipes that get fresh water so like it catches the rainwater and it goes right into that and they give that to the animals the animal kingdom so you get to learn all these like things about how disney like uses the resources in there like to ship around to the park so it's really neat yeah i i've always loved I've always loved this attraction. I agree with you about the behind the seeds tour. I've done that a few times. Mm. That is just, it's great. Mm. And again, you're kind of inside, you're out of the, the elements. Uh, it can be a little uncomfortable in the greenhouse in the middle of the yeah. summer. But um, <clears throat> And if you want to do the behind the seeds <laughs> tour, it's right outside the Soren entrance. Yeah, there's like there's a vestibule a... there where you can walk up and. If it's available, you can book it. Yeah, yeah. you can book it there. So. Yep. Um, Next on the list, um, over in the Magic Kingdom. The best attraction in the entire resort. The best attraction at Disney World. People mover. People mover. Who doesn't love the people mover? Insane people, I guess. I don't know. (laughs) And again, even when there is a line for this, and it does happen more now than Mm -hmm. I've ever seen before, where you there will be like, you know, there'll be snakeage. Mm -hmm. It'll be be cued. Um, It goes so fast. Yeah, it's... And it's never more than a few minutes. Yeah. And it's just, I and I stick by what I said. They should do a ride and dine on this. Like, you have a box lunch you can bring on, and you get, like, three, you know. Rounds. Three rounds. You're allowed to stay on it three times or something, and you have your you have your lunch. I would love, that would be so awesome. That would be so Although awesome. Although, I'm just imagining, like, going around a turn and, like, whoa, I lost my sandwich. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, it doesn't turn that fast. That if, first turn when you, you like some, come is out your of the upper body strength so bad. <laughs> when you come that out of that first, force. that that first bank, 
I'm slightly kidding. But no, you, you're not. No, you're serious. You might lose a sandwich. It'd be a tragedy. But, but I, I still think it's a good idea. Um, I love this attraction. I think that I wish there was some way that they could have like a people mover that went through it the entire Magic Kingdom that wouldn't somehow ruin the theming everywhere. Not possible, but it would be cool. That I love that view that you get of Tomorrowland, and I wish yeah. I could have that same view of the different. That lands would be cool somehow. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I just love this. Well, remember that technology was supposed to be part of the transportation system for the original vision for Epcot, which was experimental prototype community of tomorrow. It's supposed to be a city. Um, and this was supposed to be like, you know, this type of people mover would run all throughout the city, and this is how you'd get from point A to point B. Yeah. It, so that goes back to I love appreciating the history of Walt's influence, and this is another one with the people mover. I also like those little things that we can hold over the Disneyland fans and be like, ha-ha, we have something that you guys no longer have. I don't know. Wow. <laughs> he likes bitter. Yeah. He likes the people mover out well, of there's, spite. There's yeah. so many things that they have over us that I'm like, this is the one thing that we hidden, have. Hidden behind that smile is spite. He plots. So, all right, and finally on our list, and again, these were in no particular order. But finally on our list, Carousel of Progress over at the Magic Kingdom. Again, classic um, uh, classic Disney attraction um, from the 1964 World's Fair. And uh, in need of a rehab, let's mm-hmm. be honest. It's in need of a rehab. It's been in need of a rehab for a while. But again, this is an attraction where, I mean, you're in there for a good... 20, 21 minutes. Or 21 something. minutes, not to be too specific. But you're in there for a while, and it's air-conditioned, and you're really not waiting. The longest wait you're going to have is, you know, for the next show to finish. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. um, I, you know, and this is always a, it's, and it's, like, again, it's that nostalgia for, mm-hmm. for that, you know, that original Disney mm-hmm. style of, of, uh, of attraction. Vintage Disney. It's a great place to cool down uh, in the summer. It's a great place to escape the rain um, because Florida rainstorms sometimes that last only 20 minutes. So, uh, you know, a few years ago, Craig and I um, for uh, one of the destination, the D23 Destination D events, were able to uh, ride that with some other folks um, with uh, Tony Baxter and uh, Marty Sklar. So legendary Imagineers. Um, That was uh, it was the first time. I've ever seen Craig look like he was on the verge of tears. He was so excited and so like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm doing this with Tony Baxter and Marty Sklar. It was cute. It was cute. So, All right, so there you have it. Those are our picks for the eight best Walt Disney World attractions with short wait times. The Tiki Room at the Magic Kingdom, One Man's Dream, Walt Disney Presents over at... uh, Disney's Hollywood Studios, the Maharaja Jungle Trek at Animal Kingdom, Spaceship Earth at Epcot, along with Grand Fiesta Tour at the Mexico Pavilion and World Showcase, Living with the Land at Epcot, the People Mover at the Magic Kingdom, and the Carousel of Progress at the Magic Kingdom. And that will do it for this episode of the Best and Worst of Walt Disney World. We hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you again next week. Have a great one.